This is the Pixinsight process tutorial for the generalized hyperbolic stretch. You can find this process in Process, Intensity Transformation, Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. If it is not there, then please go in Resources, Updates, Manage Repositories. Here, take the link that is in the description below, click Add, Add this link, click OK, which obviously doesn't work now, <laughs> and then it's included here. Then click here, OK, go again to Resources, again to Updates, and check for updates. Then it will find it, click Apply, close PixInsight, it will install it, and it will automatically open it again, and then you will find it. So let's start what is generalized hyperbolic stretch. It is obviously a stretching method, and it is a non-linear method to do that, which means it is a curve and not a line. But what does that really mean? When you have a linear stretch, this red line here actually moves linear, up and down. That's what a linear stretch is, like the histogram transformation, like the screen transfer function. In the generalized hyperbolic stretch, we're dealing with a hyperbolic curve. And when I now put the symmetry point here in the middle, and I stretch now, you see what happens. The curve actually goes right to the center of the symmetry point and flattens out again. With the local intensity, I decide how broad I want to go. I can do that very slight or very extreme. So the big difference between a linear and a non-linear stretch is that with a linear stretch I can only affect the whole curve as such. And with a curved stretch I can actually decide which parts of a curve I want to stretch and which ones not. So it's much more specific. The issue with it is, is that it is rather complex. So we will look now exactly how to use it. The first thing that you need to know, but that's actually also with linear stretches, it's an iterative process. So you do not stretch at once, but you do it multiple times. So the first thing we need to know is where our first symmetry point is, the point where the curve attacks. And there are two different ways how this can be done. The first method is that you click here on the plus sign and it zooms in. Usually that's also where the curve is. Sometimes you have to scroll a little bit to find it. Now whenever you click here and the height doesn't matter at all, you get a yellow line and that's the symmetry point. So with method number one, we just set our first symmetry point right at the middle of the curve or a little bit to the right. And there's even some who say a little bit on the left. So that depends. I usually set it slightly to the right of the curve. And then what you do, you click on send to SP. And what it does, this number that you generated here, which is also here, 0 0.000371, gets now transferred to the symmetry point. And you see now also the arrow down here is right at the yellow line. And so our symmetry point is set. So that's one way how you can find the symmetry point. The other way is that we actually use the screen transfer function, that we see our picture, and that we look here for the slightest bit of near velocity that we can see. For example, here, when we click here, we get also this yellow line. And funny enough, we get exactly to the same point than we were before. So that's also a good way to do it. And that might be more relevant in the following stretches. I think here you can feel rather safe to simply click on the middle of the curve, or as I said, a little bit to the right and you're fine. Let's close here the screen transfer function down again. The next thing we have to do we have to change the local intensity. And for the first time, we go to about a nine, a nine to a 10, because we wanna have it rather broad, the stretch. 
we will go more into the detail in the following stretches. That we see something, we open out a real-time preview. We also zoom out here with this last zoom one-on-one -on -one magnifying glass so that we can now see in reality what's happening here. And with that said, we can now start stretching with the stretch factor. And now we slowly, slowly start stretching and you see the curve, how it goes up. And now from the left comes the curve. And we move it, move it, move it until about here. So this is 25% of the spectrum here. And we're going to about 20%. And you see faintly that the nebulosity is actually appearing. With that, we click Execute. It obviously brightens it out as if it would stretch the same intense again. It would completely blow it out. So we click on Reset. With that, we come now to our second stretch. So now with the second stretch, it's the same game again, but with different numbers. So again, you have two options. Either you can say, well, I actually, this time, I just go about in the middle of the curve down here and I will stretch here, one option. Or I go now into the preview window and I look at what I want to stretch. For example, I can say, let's stretch now at the moment about in the middle. So let's take it here. And here I'm now right in the middle again. So it's this question, do I still wanna stretch the dark parts or do I want to leave the dark rather dark and go already a little bit over here into the bright areas? There is no absolute truth here. It really depends on your object and it's about finding it out, playing with it. So my feeling would say that about here, we're okay. I click send to SP. We're now not going to a nine anymore. We're going to about a five with the local intensity because the longer we stretch, the more we want to stretch specific and not in general. That's why we're doing the generalized hyperbolic stretch and not a histogram transformation, right? With these two factors set, we can now start again with the stretching. And carefully, we move it up to about here. So what I see now is that I have all the dark parts actually stretched rather well, evenly. So in the next stage, I can then really work on the bright parts. So I execute that again. We reset again. That's always important. Now, another thing is that we have to be careful that we don't actually clip anything. And to see where we really are, the second item here on top, we go from the normal scale to a logarithmic scale. And here I see much better where I am here in the high parts. And I see there's still a lot of potential. So no issue at all. So exit here again. So as I stated, I wanna now really work on the bright parts. So this here. So this can give me a reference. Probably that's a little bit too extreme for the moment. I would say around here. Let's send that to SP. We're now only with the local intensity going up to about a three. And now we start stretching again. And look how these light parts are starting to glow. Huge difference. But when I look at it, I see that it's almost too extreme. You see these isolated places where it actually lightens things up. And that's from my taste looks not natural. So what I do now, I can actually go here also in the symmetry point and just move it and see what happens. And when I now move the symmetry point here, more things around it light up and it looks way more natural. So I like that better. And I think that's something extremely crucial here. We have these tips how we're proceeding from stretch to stretch. But at the end, it's a trial and error. And we have to understand what we're doing when we move the local intensity, the symmetry point, and the stretch factor. So just because initially we set the yellow line somewhere, doesn't mean that this has to be the right spot. And we have to figure that out. So I'm okay now. Let's stretch that again. Again, we're resetting and probably we're doing a fourth one. Let's look again where we are logarithmically. 
and we still have a little bit of potential so there's still no danger that we're clipping so what i'm seeing now that these very bright spots they actually look very nice but in the middle for example this blue here for me this is still too dark so let's click here see where we are send to sp we're going again to about a three we start stretching yes that's exactly what i need beautiful that that looks great so let's see now before we stretch that we really don't clip it's good if it would be closer what we can do you see down here protect highlights we can actually move this lever in and with that we get additional protection that we don't clip the highlights if we're fine with that we can again execute and that's it and for me that's already a very good stretch i will leave it like that from a hyperbolic stretch point of view but now the cool part is you can actually also do other stretching methods in this tool you could do also an arc side stretch here and a linear stretch now with the arc sign stretch some people ask me why i don't do it here and quite honestly i was too lazy until now to figure out how it works here and i really like the arc sign process it's kind of straightforward i know what i'm doing so that's why personally i still use the arc sign process for the arc sign stretch for the stars and i don't do it here but what we're doing now we're going to linear and it has quite a nice function which the histogram transformation doesn't have so what you now can do here is you go to low clip and you just replace the very last zero with a one and now you hit enter and it gets very dark too dark obviously but what it tells you is this is the maximum darkness that you can do without clipping or with just clipping a little tiny tiny little bit so for me this is like setting the maximum this is as dark as i could go but i don't have to so now you go to the black point and you move it up again to the bright side until you feel it looks right and for me this is about here this is how it was this is how i want it so then i click execute again and i exit the preview and here it is our stretch picture so i understand there were now things on here which I did not explain. This tool is extremely powerful and you can do so much more. For example, here in mode, you can actually stretch only by color or by lightness or by saturation. But then again, sometimes I ask myself, why do I have a curve transformation? Why do I have a saturation process? I do not necessarily feel compelled to do now everything here. So personally, what I feel what's worth doing in this process is the generalized hyperbolic stretch and at least until Ersiastro brings out the stretch exterminator <laughs> this is the best possibility to stretch with the little caveat for stars where it makes sense to do a pre-stretch with the arc sign stretch and then move to the generalized hyperbolic stretch and the only other thing that I would do in here is as I showed you right now go to linear and just tone it a little bit down where in the process you got too bright with the dark background but to conclude i think the most important takeaway for you is it's absolutely crucial that you play with this stretch factor local intensity symmetry and get a feel what these three levers are doing and that you purposefully examine your picture which parts do still need some stretching and which parts not because that is the main difference from this stretching tool to a linear stretch where you do not have this possibility to really do some targeted stretches and if you would like the whole process as i just showed it to you in a one pager please have a look at my patreon channel where this will be available for you see you next time and clear skies